So uh, maybe we can uh, we can start yep. with uh, this uh, virtual coffee. Um, the the idea for today is to have a short talk about uh, you know, the the concepts that uh, we consider important to to have uh, performance uh, applications. Um, okay, so uh, maybe we can start with a short uh, introduction. Uh, Edu? Or... Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. I introduce myself first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Edu, Eduard, and I work in the Barcelona office of Plain Concepts as a principal tech lead for cloud uh, solutions. And we are specialists in cloud solutions, mess mostly based on Azure technologies, and that's all, more or less. Okay, and uh, me, I'm uh, Alex uh, Caschetti. I'm uh, also uh, for uh, from the Barcelona office and, and plan concepts and. Uh, uh, my main responsibility is uh, also uh, cloud uh, projects. Uh, maybe I'm more focused on data and AI projects, but uh, also uh, all the performance uh, considerations uh, that uh, we are going to talk today are, are important in all, all the stack. So, um, let's go. Uh, maybe um, we can, uh, um, or uh, this is an open uh, talk. If you have uh, questions, uh, you can uh, put the uh, question, and, and we can uh, you can uh, oh, we can answer. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for the assistance. And let's go. I'm going to share also my camera. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go. This is um, the four points that uh, we have. Um, maybe we're gonna um, talk about uh, more things, but uh, the idea is to talk uh, about uh, what we consider uh, that uh, is a performance application and the different uh, architectures that uh, we have in, in Azure. Or maybe I think that uh, to have uh, performance applications, uh, we have uh, services in, in, in Azure or we have uh, features in Azure that uh, we can use uh, to have, um, I don't know, High, um, high availability, uh, like uh, auto scale, that is a very well known uh, feature. But uh, there are other services, like uh, I don't know, feature uh, front door or traffic manager, that uh, are not uh, um, uh, like uh, public uh, or well known uh, services. What do you mean? Uh, what do you think? Yes, I think that um, for having what we call performance applications, we need to ensure that our application can work on big loads of requests and data, so the application mm -hmm. is scalable. And we also need to ensure that if we have any outage, any regional outage, or any zone, or in, anything goes wrong, we can still uh, function, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the application can still go on. So I think that is for having a really performant application, uh, one of the most important things is having a scalable and resilient applications. And that and that is what we will be covered in the few first minutes. And mm -hmm. then uh, we need to be able to analyze what's happening when things are going wrong to being able to um, to get analysis and get data and get answers about what happened. Okay, exactly. and, the, and we will the idea is to to 
um, talk about the, our proposal or uh, what we are doing in different uh, projects about uh, to have uh, all the traces uh, of mm -hmm. the different uh, applications in uh, one single point and yeah. to be able to monitor and, and track the performance of the, yeah. of the applications. Uh, okay, this is um, the first, uh, it's not a simple uh, diagram, uh, but the, the idea behind this uh, diagram is to show to show you uh, how the how is the architecture of a web application yeah to have a different or to have it in different uh, regions uh, deployed and uh, to be able to um, move the traffic between these uh, regions uh, yeah. yes in uh, this and case in this case we have one active region which is the primary one the top on the diagram we mm -hmm. will be the active region, the one that will serve all the requests. And in this case, we are having a standby region, a secondary region, only by backup purposes if the first region mm -hmm. goes down. From my point yeah. of view, yeah. um, there are two interesting services here. One is the CDN, which is for serving static resources mm -hmm. uh, using low latency. So the user gets the static content served from a location nearer uh, to him and mm -hmm. the front door, which is a uh, multi-region Azure service that acts la like a load balancer from level seven. So it's an HTTP load balancer, but is capable to uh, balance traffic between Azure regions. Yeah. I think that this is a good point because uh, we have uh, other slides that uh, we are going to talk about different uh, services, uh, front door, uh, traffic manager, and uh, application gateway or uh, load uh, balancer that uh, are uh, the, the, the uh, what to say the the goal uh, more or less is the same, but in yeah. different uh, scenarios. Okay, and uh, we have a different. Uh, different uh, balancers that are working in different uh, in different uh, layers that it's important to know uh, mm -hmm. when uh, to use each one and uh, for example here uh, you said that uh, we have uh, one uh, scenario is with with uh, an active version and uh, one yes. standby but maybe uh, another scenario is to have two active uh, regions. So, uh, in this case, uh, for example, in this um, in this scenario, all the traffic goes to one to the active uh, region, but maybe we can have uh, two active and um, uh, redirect the traffic uh, with uh, some uh, rules, with uh, priority of the. The response time of the exactly, and mm -hmm. uh, all, all the location of the final user. We can uh, redirect the 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 traffic to the best uh, region. And also, we have another approach that is to have one active and uh, one uh, passive uh, region. That uh, when the active uh, region or the data center goes uh, down, we can up a new a new region. Yeah. Yes, this is this is absolutely needed. If uh, basically if you need to have a 24 7 100 percent availability application you need to have it deployed in more than one region because you need to survive a regional outage that it's very rare but it can happen so you need to be sure that if one entire azure region goes down your application is at least deployed in another region so you can use in this case uh, front door traffic manager is another service that uh, do more or less the same but we will see the differences later Mm -hmm. and you can redirect your traffic to another region. Uh, also to mention that we have some Azure services that um, are 
very good working in more than one region, like Cosmos DB, for example. In Cosmos DB, you can have automatic data replication between regions, so you don't have to do anything special. Basically, you just configure your Cosmos DB to be in region one and in region two, and Cosmos DB automatically synchronize the data between the two regions. So it makes it very easy work with more than one region. If you work in some other services, uh, you need to do this synchronization with more or less help from Azure, but you need to configure and do the synchronization by yourself in some cases. Mm -hmm. And uh, another component that uh, we have in this uh, in this uh, diagram is uh, Redis Cache. Uh, so this is a um, critical component to to uh, improve the performance with uh, or to avoid uh, uh, round trips to the to the database. So this is uh, also an important point to have. Uh, mm -hmm. more performance uh, applications so uh, I don't yeah. know and yeah. just to final to finish the diagram the typical use of queues or service bus or event grid That's or true. something the coupling mechanism to allow the coupling tasks from the app services in this case to allow app services serve more requests okay um, I don't know if we have a question so far. No, question. not right now, Alex. Okay, continue. Uh, okay, this is a, a more uh, a little bit uh, complex uh, diagram. Uh, so here, we, I think that we have the four uh, components that uh, I said uh, before. We have a traffic manager, front door, uh, we have uh, here application gateway and uh, load, load balance. uh, balancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and uh, here, uh, maybe the, the important thing is that uh, we use uh, front door uh, to redirect or to put the traffic uh, based in some uh, rules that uh, are, for example, in this case. We are uh, routing uh, with the path uh, store to these different uh, instances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we redirect to uh, all the other uh, requests to the uh, applications, uh, to different application gateways in two different uh, regions. And here we have, uh, or we use uh, Traffic Manager to uh, redirect uh, the, um, the request to the storage. Yes, yeah. I think that the key point here is um, the main difference between Front Door and Traffic Manager, both of them are able to serve requests and redirect requests between Azure regions, so are multi-regional load balancers. The main difference could be traffic manager is DNS, basically. So works at mm -hmm. DNS level, so it's protocol agnostic. Um, so basically it can redirect any kind of traffic, any kind of protocol. And front door is basically HTTP, HTTPS, load balancer. Um, so it can take uh, what Alex said before, it can take decision based on HTTP rules, in this case, the path, the path of the mm -hmm. request, but can only process HTTP, HTTPS rules. And uh, traffic manager allows you to redirect any other protocol like, uh, I don't know, database access or uh, whatever you want to expose uh, outside, that is not HTTP, uh, HTTPS. So I think that that's the key point, more or less. Exactly. And uh, here in, the, in this internal uh, region, we have an uh, application uh, gateway yeah. uh, that uh, here we have an application gateway because it's uh, on top of the, um, this pool of uh, virtual uh, machines uh, because uh, it provides um, some other services like um, uh, the WAF, uh, Windows Applications uh, Firewall. Firewall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, also this um, service uh, redirects the or um, yeah, uh, routes the traffic to different uh, server pools 
uh, according different uh, different uh, rules. Yeah. Yes. So basically, we could say that more or less is saving the differences, but more or less the application gateway is like a front door, but inside the region. So it's basically mm -hmm. a level seven HTTP load balancer, and the same. Basically, uh, in this case, in this diagram, with um, the request of a front door are redirected inside an application gateway and then the application gateway makes another decision rule based on HTTP to the site which in this case backend pool or pool of mm -hmm. virtual machines are able to serve that request. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so finally we have the, the load balancer the, 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 on the bottom. Yeah sorry, sorry Alex. But the yeah but uh, so the main difference uh, um, between for example traffic manager and uh, application gateway is the because uh, traffic managers uh, provides uh, also uh, uh, firewall application firewall yeah. Yeah, the main difference is uh, one is for cross um, is cross region and uh, application gateway is for uh, one region yeah. Yes, yes, and it's typical or common scenario to have a front door that ends redirecting traffic to an mm -hmm. application gateway inside the region. Okay. Okay. And uh, as you said, the, uh, we have the internal load uh, balancer. This is a um, balancer uh, that uh, works on layer four. Yeah. So it's working in TCP level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically a typical layer for load balancer that you can use in any scenario that you don't need to use a level seven load balancer that will be application gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, for, for example, for any other protocol that is not HTTP, HTTPS, you can use load balancer or even though you can use load balancer for HTTP, HTTPS, if you don't want to take any action based on the HTTP, HTTPS parameters. So basically, mm -hmm. if you want, you are planning only to route based on TCP IP, like internet address, port and something like that, you can use an internal load balancer. Yeah, and uh, I think that uh, it's important to mention that, uh, for example, this kind of uh, services, uh, all of them, uh, they have uh, the, um, the uh, proof uh, to have uh, the, um, the uh, status of the services, the health uh, status yeah. of the, the services. And I think that it's important or the best practice uh, here is to have uh, one endpoint that uh, gives you or gives the status not only of one endpoint uh, but uh, the, uh, all the um, all the different components for example it's not only to know if the app service is, is working also mm -hmm. uh, is to know if the all the dependencies uh, are working or yeah. So yeah, basically, or yeah. the more information we give to the balancer, the more accurate decisions it can take. So the load balancer, IP application gateway, whatever, needs to know mm -hmm. if a server is able to process that request. Um, and that's not only that the server is online, it's online and it will be able to process requests. So the dependencies or the mm, mandatory dependencies are reachable. Okay, so if uh, we give this information to the balancer, the balancer can take more appropriate actions. So I think that's 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 mm -hmm. important to to have it in mind. Okay, and then here we have the SQL data replication, also that is uh, a feature that uh, mm -hmm. SQL data is provides uh, out of exactly. the box. Uh, next slide uh, is the approach to, uh, to use. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, everyone is talking about Kubernetes right now, so um, there is no currently um, any multi-region support, support yeah. region support for IKS. So you need to have two independent IKS deploy it in two regions and then use one of the services we talked uh, before to redirect the traffic between uh, one of them. Um, on the other way, the ACR, which is the Container Registry, 
it has some multi-region capabilities, meaning that the AKS is able to pulling the Docker images closer to the region where the AKS is to uh, reduce the, the Docker pulling images times. Okay, and uh, also there is a native integration between AKS and the application gateway. Okay, so um, you can use the Azure application gateway as an ingress controller for an uh, AKS. Uh, mm -hmm. So you don't need to have a specific ingress controller if you deploy if you are just uh, deploying AKS on Azure. Okay. Um... Let's continue. Uh, yeah. Questions? No questions. Okay. Mm, so this is uh, the um, approach or the services uh, that uh, we use in, in nature to uh, monitor to get uh, traces for from different applications or different uh, resources. The, mm -hmm. um, the idea is Azure, provi Azure Monitor provides a unified uh, system to have the logs and also the, the metrics to analyze our applications. And uh, here we have different uh, levels. So the first uh, level is to get the traces of the applications using uh, different different services uh, for example uh, here uh, to have uh, application insights and uh, to get all these uh, traces uh, in a unique uh, in a unique uh, point yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah That's the idea is that uh, we can uh, connect this uh, or we can see these uh, traces using or we can uh, we can analyze uh, using uh, for example power bi we can uh, have uh, the, dash the dashboards that uh, we have in uh, Azure portal and um, we can have a uh, different uh, different views of the this uh, this monitoring, and uh, we have uh, different services uh, also or um, metrics analytics is a um, service that uh, provide uh, Azure uh, portal and uh, log analytics is a service where we can create uh, custom queries to analyze the the data. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to have uh, specific queries, to have uh, metrics about uh, the the logs of the virtual machines or applications or whatever we we have in in Azure. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that Azure Monitor is like a history of unification. So previously we had some different services like application insights that we are using to store metrics and basically they give, okay, let's unify everything that we had in Azure inside Azure Monitor or some application insights, container insights, Azure, mm -hmm. VM Monitor and whatever and put additional tools on top of it like metrics analyzer and log analytics. So giving a unified experience and platform to view and analyze your log and metrics in Azure. So it's a very powerful tool. Exactly. And uh, also it's important to have uh, notifications. So it's not needed to have uh, the dashboard in front of uh, you to have uh, uh, to see how the application is working. Uh, we have the possibility to create notification alerts and, uh, and do some actions uh, according to some conditions. Yeah. So we can, for example, uh, to auto scale or to launch uh, a, a script to do uh, whatever uh, we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And also it's important uh, for uh, accessibility, we can integrate with uh, different uh, with different 
uh, APIs. We can have a webhook to call or to make a request to an external service, or we can use uh, Logic Apps to create a workflow. And that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, Alex, we have, if yeah. possible, we have a suggestion that if we could use, if you could present with PowerPoint, um, use the oh, presenting yeah. mode to get the slides bigger. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, this is more in a cloud native uh, world using Kubernetes. Um, we have um the, the the facto standard for getting metrics in kubernetes world is prometheus prometheus is a cloud native foundation project which basically is a metrics um analyzer and and it works in more or less a different way, like for example, application insights. And application insights is the application that make pushes to the application insights using the SDK and push the metrics. Prometheus works in more of a pool model. So you need to expose every application that runs, for example, inside the Kubernetes cluster uh, that want to be monitored, monitored using Prometheus, need to expose an endpoint where Prometheus will grab all the metrics. This endpoint needs to provide the metrics using a specific Prometheus format, which is more or less like plain text. Okay, and Prometheus use a pull mechanism. Uh, it also has a push gateway to allow push metrics for more or for basically short live jobs. If you have a short live jobs, uh, Prometheus won't know that job even exists because can be created and then uh, destroyed. So in this case, you have a push mechanism to put metrics on Prometheus, but it's not the usual way. Usual way is uh, expose a public endpoint or an internal endpoint if you are in Kubernetes in this case, and Prometheus every five minutes, every minute, every 10 seconds, it depends, uh, will call this endpoint to retrieve uh, your metrics. Uh, when you have Prometheus, uh, you can integrate an alert manager, which is basically um, the same that we have in Azure in alerts, okay? With alert manager, when some metric reaches some level, we can do send an email or do uh, whatever thing. There are a lot of plugins for alert manager. And then we have the PromQL, which is the language that Prometheus uses to analyze the metrics. PromQL is like a SQL, but for metrics, something similar that has Azure also for metrics. And then we have Grafana, which is the standard de facto for uh, monitoring Prometheus metrics. So Grafana is basically the graphical dashboard. You can build and share and consume graphical dashboards in Grafana. This is the standard and the canonical way to use metrics inside the cloud native application using Kubernetes. And a good thing that uh, has Azure is that um, Azure Monitor has integration with Prometheus. That means that if you have any application, any container running in, in uh, IKS that exposes Prometheus metrics, okay, you don't need to have a Prometheus server. So you don't need to have installed a Prometheus server in the cluster. Okay, you can configure Azure Monitor to act like Prometheus and integrate the metrics that are exposed by your applications running in the cluster directly into Azure Monitor. So you can configure and you can view and you can work with these metrics in the same way that you work with any other metrics in Azure. So I think that it's a very good feature that Azure has in this case. Okay, I, I think that um, when we talk about the different uh, services, uh, in this case, uh, it's important to know uh, when to use uh, um, this uh, this service or uh, when to use, uh, I don't know, uh, local analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, uh, Prometheus is for this uh, Kubernetes uh, scenario, or do you think that this um, maybe is uh, okay? Um, that's it's, a good. That's a good important question. Important in other scenarios. Yeah. That's a good question. If you are in Azure Pay AS mode and whatever, log analytics is your best option by far. Okay, why? It's native. It's integrated in Azure, so it makes no sense use anything else. Uh, Prometheus can monitor 
anything because it's based on I need to have a public endpoint or an endpoint reachable by Prometheus that exposed the metrics. So it's agnostic on the technology that you're monitoring, but Prometheus has become the fact standard in Kubernetes and cloud native applications. Okay, so uh, there are all and Kube and, and Prometheus is also very integrated in Kubernetes API and automatically it's capable to grab a lot of metrics in a Kubernetes cluster using some of the internal Kubernetes uh, API that are able to expose metrics in Prometheus format. So um, for Kubernetes, I think that almost everyone is using Prometheus. Okay, so in this case, when you have an application that can have an IKS and some other Azure resources, okay, so you will have not only your IKS, but you are running some of your um, backend in IKS, but you are also using some PIS resources and you are using databases and whatever. Uh, in this case, you can monitor or you can, uh, all the knowledge and all the community things that um, are available for using in Kubernetes, in AKS, using Prometheus, you will be able to integrate the date in Azure Monitor. And last slide, uh, just uh, to show the stack uh, for another uh, monitoring tool. Is, uh, in this case, is the Elastic uh, stack and Kibana. Yeah. yeah. And uh, here we have uh, different uh, components to, from uh, bits. Uh, that is the component to get the data from the um, different uh, sources. Uh, Logstash, that is uh, for uh, to query the data, to uh, aggregate uh, the data. Elasticsearch, uh, that uh, is the component to store and uh, and for to create the index. And Kibana is the um, monitoring tool to create uh, dashboard visualizations. And uh, also, um, we can uh, uh, here, uh, Kibana have uh, the component to create uh, uh, alerts uh, from uh, the Elastic uh, Search uh, indexes. Yeah. Yes, uh, ALK, which is this stack, the Elasticsearch Lovstash Kibana, um, mm -hmm. is very powerful because um, basically this is for logs, not for metrics, but it can be used for metrics too. Okay, but most so there's no problem using it for metrics, but most people use it mainly for logs because logs are unstructured data and Elasticsearch uh, offers a very powerful capability to search, to do full text search on unstructured data. So it's very good to store your logs inside Elasticsearch because then you can use the power of Elasticsearch uh, to do full text queries and find every log that contains the word null pointer exception, for example, or the, any function, any name of function in the stack trace of an exception that you can log. Okay, Kibana is the dashboard manager and the analytics and the analytics tool for Elasticsearch and Logstash and Bits are log collectors and uh, aggregations and processing. Okay, that's one just one stack. It's a simple stack. In Azure, Log Monitor um, have something equivalent like that with Log Analytics. So in, with Log Analytics, you also have a query to uh, ask for the logs and make something uh, similar that um, uh, ELK provides to you. But I think that this is for logs. Previously, we talked about metrics. An important thing is that we need to be able or we should be able to correlate the metrics with the logs. Okay, it's very powerful to have a very uh, system that allows us for uh, searching for logs fast for error messages or error types or whatever. But uh, once I have found one log, which is the culprit of any bug that I'm trying to solve, I would like to see, okay, what were the metrics at this timestamp? So I need to correlate, for example, the CPU with the number of exceptions that are of type null pointer exception in the class, whatever. Okay, so uh, I can do that with Azure Monitor. I can do that with ALK if I store the metrics also in 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 uh, ALK. Uh, if we are more in a cloud native uh, way, we can use, for example, uh, there are a lot of products for Kubernetes, but for example, Loki from Grafana is a very powerful log searcher and aggregator too, and it's integrated so you can correlate using Grafana, you can correlate the metrics 
that you have from Prometheus with the logs that you have from Loki. You have also paid solutions like Datadog. So there is a lot of products and tools and technologies that can help you here. But for me, it's important that you need to store your logs in somewhere. So you need to be able to aggregate your logs. All the services logs aggregated in a single place that allows you search that logs in efficient way and correlate with the metrics that uh, you also have taken. So I think that that's the key point. Okay, perfect. So I think that uh, with this uh, slide we finish. We are have uh, cover uh, thirty minutes, and uh, I think that. Uh, we have covered uh, also the main topics that uh, mm -hmm. we want to talk today. I don't know if we have uh, questions or not. No. Okay. So maybe we can. Uh, Finish and uh, here the, um, this first virtual coffee. <laughs> yes, I coffee? had my coffee. <laughs> here <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So thank you, thank you very much uh, to attend this uh, this event and uh, see you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.